All right, everybody. Welcome back to a lifetime of conversations. I'm Rob. And <laughs> I guess that leaves me being Dave still. So you know, today is 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 a, is a look up into the into the uh, into the great beyond. And what sparked me to want to do this is uh, the other night. I was like last week, and I'm I'm driving around, and I, and I don't talk about what I do, but I'm driving around. It's nighttime. Mm-hmm. I look up, and I see a meteor a meteor going up. Mm-hmm. We call it a rocket. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because uh, yeah, it's funny because it's clearly going up, like right. diagonally upwards. But if I always imagine if that was a meteor coming down, well, it'd be the last thing we saw. Because if it was big enough to see it like that, you're pretty much done. Yeah, right. But I see more. I've seen more rockets living here in Florida in the last three years than I have ever seen in my entire life, and it's because they launch them every, almost every month. Mm-hmm. Like SpaceX is launching out of Kennedy or Cape Canaveral at least every month or two yeah. you know whether it's uh the satellites for um for the satellite what the hell's a starlink mm-hmm. uh, you're always launching something right and uh it, it just it puts me in awe because you can't miss it like a black sky there's there's planets there's stars and then there's a rocket going up into space yeah. and it was just a huge ball and, and the tail and it's going up and then you can see actually the moment i saw it i jumped right to my phone i find it live on Star on on uh, SpaceX, you know, mm-hmm. on YouTube, and I'm watching it. So I'm watching it as I'm watching it. And then you watch Miko cut off, and the engine cuts off, and it it just disappears in your view. And then but then you can finish watching it on the phone, yeah. right? So it's like I love that. that. There's always one of my favorite things. But that's what kind of sparked me to write this uh, a while back because it's not the first rocket I saw. But so uh, one of the most exciting things that I found lately, and it, it, it's not as exciting as most people think, but I guess it's. The fruits that will come from all of these years and years and decades beyond, Osiris Rex. Osiris Rex was basically, um, I guess you call it a spacecraft. It was a spacecraft that was launched in 2016 on September 8th, right? Mm -hmm. A long time ago. It took seven years to get there. It went to a rocket, uh, a rocket. It went to the asteroid Bennu, basically. And this is an American return sample. And it went and dropped this, like, bucket smashed uh, kind of bumped into the asteroid grabbed the sample pushed back and then came all the way back to earth you know with the sample mm-hmm. and uh it's it's not like it hasn't been done before japan did it i believe and uh and there was a couple of other ones uh, europe had one and there was a couple but this was the largest sample ever returned and it was a lot it was almost like four times the amount that they thought they were going to get they got big chunks they got powder they got you know and but, and they shared it with all those other yeah, countries. Yeah, and oh, they definitely yeah. share it. I mean, we usually get first dibs and then they pass off because, of course, yeah, I mean, that's the point of science is to give it out, mm-hmm. you know. But, um, and it's funny because I, I watched it take off in 16 and you don't really think about it because you're like, it's going to take seven years. I'm not going to remember this. And then seven years goes by and you totally forget and you're like, oh, shit, that's right. Yeah. I forgot it was up there. Like, I don't follow space that much. Like, there are people that track it and they're like, where is it now and what is it doing? It's like, it's flying through space, really boring, like... Like it's not doing anything. It didn't get there yet. It only does something when it gets there. Yeah. But um, you know, back then it took off on an Atlas V, a Centaur rocket, and it's it's funny because they almost like they. I don't even think they use those anymore. If, I'm not really sure, but nowadays they they use you know much more progressive things. A lot of the Falcon heavies and the Falcon nines because they're simple and easy. But you don't realize like back then. So that whole rocket was just completely thrown into the ocean <laughs> after this thing went up. You know. But uh, yeah, they were disposable, right? I mean, and it's funny because almost all other rockets are disposable besides SpaceX nowadays. It's still like they're trying. We're gonna get there eventually, but you know, it's it's still just a norm. But it was a it was a stunning launch. It was flawless. It all worked perfectly, and it's beautiful, just like every other launch. You know, yeah. they should be good. So this thing for seven seven years flying through the space, eighty nine million kilometers from Earth. Wow, and it just and it has this like giant bucket on the front. It was basically it looks like a like a colander with a top on it, and it just like kind of cr- pumped bumped into it, collected some shit as it hit, <laughs> and, and then backed off and flew back to Earth. And why I talk about this now is because it landed about a month or two ago, and it was amazing. It landed in Utah, you know, and and it comes in in a capsule, just kind of like the same capsule the Russians use when they land people. It's like that dome shape mm-hmm. with the heat shield on the bottom, right. parachutes down. The parachute. Yeah, pretty standard. Like that's it works, so they keep it going. But 
it was just amazing. It enters Earth. It enters Earth at like twenty seven thousand miles an hour. You know, because it's really small and it's not like a big rocket that slows down and has boosters. This thing really. I don't know if they have retro retro boosters that slow it down, but they use mostly the parachutes. But because there's no people on it, you know, it could smash into the earth. Yeah, and it doesn't it's matter. Fine. It's not going to matter. It, it landed good. pretty softly too, but it was just amazing. And they got just a a big chunk, man. I I, I don't remember. I can't remember if I wrote it down exactly how much they got, but the sample collected was a lot more than they thought. Like, there were big chunks and, and small pieces, and, you know, they basically were doing that to test the theory, and, you know, it tells them a lot more about the rocket, uh, the asteroid itself, water content, metal composition, and all that, and probably testing for future asteroid collection and mining and, you know, in the far future. But it was, uh, it was pretty amazing, pretty amazing. I wonder what they're going to find. Yeah, and I know they, they did, as probably, probably at, as of this time, they probably found more information. It takes so long to go through that data. Yeah. Like, and whether they're doing spectrographs or spectroanalysis or, I don't know, all the, sure all the scientific are. crap that makes, like, you know, now that they have it in their hands. And it's funny because, like, it took them days just to clean room it. Because, you know, they don't want any outside bacteria yeah. and any outside influence to, to corrupt it. So they put them in these, like, you know, like those radioactive chambers with the with the gloves. No, right. <laughs> you like know, Homer Simpson. Yeah, kind of. Or like when my daughter was born a preemie and you have to change the diaper that way. Right. That's what you have to do. You can't touch a preemie because they're right. underdeveloped. Right. So you got to change the diaper with the little things. Same thing. But so, you know, like, and it's, I always get, even if when I talk about it with someone, they're like, well, what do they do that for? And, like, what do they want to know? Like, I mean, there's lots of stuff. I mean, number one, we've never done it before. Isn't that enough? Like, half the time, that's the point of exploration. Mm -hmm. Even if we're not the ones doing it personally, you know, hundreds of scientists built this thing and sent it up, right? Right. Yeah. Why so did we do it? I don't know. Why do, why, do kids why, not? Put, why do kids put firecrackers in frogs' butts? Yeah. Why do kids put, you know, Legos in their nose? I mean, because right. they can. There's a hole. Let me stick something in there. So it's pretty <laughs> much the same. Look, there's space. Let's fly there. Yeah. But, I mean... When you ask when you ask them the real questions, they'll tell you. I mean, the formation and evolution of the solar system. That's what they're really looking for because those asteroids would basically be remnants of old planetary collisions sure. or preformed planets that got destroyed. Now, you're talking, you know, billions of years ago. Mm -hmm. So if they can figure out core compositions and stuff like that, you know, like, and it's far above any of our pay scales for the most part, you know, but, you know, in the future, it all leads to more data, more information, more no, you know. And the initial stages of planetary formation, the source of organic compounds, you know, that led to the formation of Earth. Because we're still, well, I'm telling you, that day, I hope I'm alive. I hope I'm alive the day we do find something on another whatever, planet, moon, some type of life. Mm -hmm. And not going to be the guy in the spaceship, right? It's going to be, you know, microbial right. or whatever. Probably. Right. But they will find something eventually alive. And then they'll compare the DNA of that to the DNA of Earth. Mm -hmm. And if it's not the same, that's the biggest thing we have ever discovered in human history. Yeah, that's alien. If it's the same as Earth, that's the biggest thing we've ever discovered yeah. in human history. One way it doesn't another. matter what yeah. the answer is. It'll just, it'll just be epic. So, I mean, a lot of that has to do with it. You know, signs of water. The water is a big deal. Because yeah, where there's water, there's life. Well, not so much on the asteroid, but the idea that if there's water on an asteroid, that they're mineable, they're usable. If we do eventually come up with a way to extract or collect and return, we would be able to use it or something. Oh, um, like but yes, also where water is like... Like, like, like bottled water is not expensive enough. Right. <laughs> bottled space water. Mmm. <laughs> $18,000 a bottle. <laughs> Might kill you. Uh, or like, yeah, whether, I mean, it's not even just the water, hydrogen, they, they'll they extract the hydrogen uh, for fuel, as mm -hmm. well as the water for air and or water and or fuel. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, those are the, the general reasons. And it, it wasn't, it wasn't exactly the most exciting thing ever. And it's funny, because like, people always, they make it sound so exciting, cause, because they have to. space scientists are excited about that shit. Yeah. You know, like, when you really think about it, the seven-year wait, if you can just forget about it and then come back to it and go, oh, yeah, wow. Oh, okay. So it worked. 
but they don't know it's not they don't know it's going to work for seven years like these people are sitting biting their nails on front of a like they have to go to work every day tracking it making sure i'm sure they're doing other things but making sure okay it's still flying we still got a few more years the closer it gets the closer it gets and then they're biting their nails just trying to wait to see if this seven years of my life was worth this bucket of space rock (laughs) don't get a flat tire please don't get a flat tire (laughs) So, so it took seven years there, and then another seven years back, or three and uh, a half. No, three. I think it was three and three. It was a seven-year oh. journey round trip. Okay. Yeah, because I, I, you know, that's a good question. Yeah, because that that would be fourteen years. No. Yeah, no, it wasn't fourteen years. It was two thousand sixteen. So it launched in sixteen. Uh, do okay, the, yeah, do the so math. Yeah. I'm not okay. that good. So yeah, wherever they t- they total it, because you know, if it didn't come back at all, it wouldn't matter. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure. There's a difference in speed going and coming, and I don't know what that is. I would imagine that it's less coming back because there's less push. Because they'll usually slingshot sometimes around planets or moons right. for a gravity assist. But there's not enough gravity on that on that asteroid. No, right. but that's also something that... Now, this is... I'm glad you mentioned that in a sense because less than... I mean, I would say almost about a month ago from today or a couple of weeks, or few, they launched Psyche. Psyche out to a metal asteroid that's i want to say it's somewhere in the belt like oh it's no between uh, mars and jupiter there are you know a certain asteroid belt between mars and jupiter Mm -hmm. but they launched psyche off a falcon heavy now this time it's the rocket that actually landed right so yeah you go back seven years later and we actually we fixed that we don't throw the rocket we didn't throw the rocket away we reused it because now we have that tech but this is pretty much the same thing except psyche went to a metal asteroid. Now, they know it's metal through... Uh, they, it's hard for me to even understand it, but the idea is the way microwaves bounce off of it, uh, have a different frequency and, right. and density and stuff like that, and shininess, I mean, the light and reflection. But we only speculate that through math and what we see through observation, right? Now they're going to go there, so now they'll know. But like you said, when you said the gravity, because it's metal, it'll have... Um, like a, more mass more mass and it'll be heavy right it'll be heavier right. to have more gravity in itself but they have a magnometer magnometer i think i'm saying that right basically it, it detects magnets you mm-hmm. know the difference of the magnetic field that's coming off of the asteroid but we can't detect that from earth so that's another reason why why are we doing this we can't mine it why are we doing it well we're, we're, let's test this new system yeah. you know, check, and, check our math yeah well yeah to, it's actually to yeah to basically prove the math right mm-hmm. uh, and plus you know kind of stuff is cool yeah, that's but, cool. uh Yeah, launched out of Cape Canaveral. It was pretty bad. Both bo- and both boosters, it was great. Because, you know, they land the boosters as well as the rocket. Mm-hmm. So, like, the boosters both land pretty much simultaneously. This one, one landed slightly before the other. But uh, it, it just, you know. And what's crazy is that this asteroid was discovered in 1872. So, like, some, like, pre in our version of prehistoric scientists is looking through a telescope and discovers this thing. Like over a hundred, wow. one hundred fifty years ago, give or take, right? And and now we're flying a spacecraft, we're too. visiting it, right? Like if you went back one hundred and fifty years before he discovered that there was no like telescope, let alone spacecraft to even think of. But that's why I look at the jump in technology for the future. It's like, I I, do you think he would like he found this thing? I don't remember who it was. I forget his name. Uh, but you think he's like one day we'll go there. Like, that wasn't on their mind. They no. didn't even think of that. that they actually probably thought that was impossible. Like, yeah. like, no, there's no way. We can see it, but we'll never get there. Yeah. And that's, truthfully, we won't, but, you know. That's like Christopher Columbus saying, wow, I wish I had a cell phone so I could call the queen and let her know I'm in, you know, right. I'm in America. <laughs> Where's GPS or now? India. Damn. Yeah. This one, too, I, I'm not sure how long this one was going to take. I don't remember. I, I mean, I watched the whole thing on it, and it was it, it's a lot of technical stuff, and mm-hmm. And again, they're just excited it left. But it's another long journey. I mean, it takes, it's between Mars and Jupiter. So any SpaceX crash takes at least nine months to a year to get to Mars. Yeah. Oh, and then they're taking a long route because they're doing another gravity assist. So it might take two or three years mm-hmm. just to even get there and then come back. So you fact, factor in six or seven years, maybe, you know. Wow. And it's funny because like we don't, like we're like dog years when it comes to space. Yeah. Like you know, like when you say your dog is eleven, and like how many is that dog years? It's, they're eleven. Why does it have to be human years? It's space like, years matched into dog years. It's just because they generally live to fourteen. So eleven is like eighty-two. Great, you know, or whatever seventy-four. 
But that's why it's so cool living in Florida. I mean, you get to see these launches all the time yeah. because it's or a the option, perfect. It's a perfect place for us to yeah. launch these things. Yeah. Yeah. Coastal, close to the equator, close enough. Close yeah. as you're going to get here, anyways. They do it in Texas too for the same reasons. Mm-hmm. Closer, you know, to the equator. Yeah, that's weather's another. warm. Te- they don't have to worry about Florida. ice and rain and snow. Mm-hmm. You know, which would devastate oh. launch rockets. You yeah, know, absolutely. And they have a hard enough time as it is. But yeah, I mean, you know, and that's the thing with space. Like, I, it, it, and it's only going to get so much more exciting. At, I mean, the Artemis program is launching. Four, the astronauts have been chosen. I'm following this, too. In 2024, this year coming up, they're mm-hmm. going to launch men to the moon. Now, they're not going to land on the moon. They're going to do the same thing that the, the test uh, Artemis 1 did. Mm-hmm. They're going to basically put the people on the capsule, test the whole system of, of orbiting the moon, flying around, getting the trajectories and all that, and then you know do all the testing on the men. They want to see what the radiation levels are like, how, how long they can stay up there, test the new systems. And I can only imagine what, like... Like an Artemis ship or spacecraft capsule is going to look like compared to what they flew up in oh 1960, right? Know, 69. Right? Like they, they had like dials and whistles and bells mm-hmm. and like lights that lit up and flashed and toggle switches. A yeah. toggle switch. There's no toggle switches. They're flat screen televisions and touch screens yeah. and special gloves that can, space gloves that can touch touch screens. <laughs> space gloves. So, well, they do that, yeah. you know, yeah. because that was a big deal. They're like, oh, we have to put, they have to be able to touch a touch screen. I learned this at the gun range in the winter when it's really fucking cold and you don't get you don't get gloves that you can touch a touch screen with you can't use your phone so you like have to take a glove off and you're freezing and oh, you, that you know. sucks but I, it seems stupid and silly but get the a idea stylus that, pen I guess you could but where you know I gotta find the pen I'm freezing my hands are shaking <laughs> yeah Artemis Artemis uh, 2 is gonna be pretty spectacular and it's the fact that they're sending actual astronauts that's always a big deal it doesn't matter the moment you, you could send a million probes into space send up 27 curiosity rovers to mars yeah. but at the moment you stick people in there people are like "Ooh, go back to nail biting it to, yeah you know, absolutely. we don't want another challenger we don't want another fucking no, apollo no problems which yeah. you know generally don't have anymore but and looking at this equipment in the spaceship now versus then right it's and like that's... it's kind of like looking at the titanic versus like one of these modern cruise ships right Right. Oh it my dwarfs. God! Yeah. Like, yeah. Could that go down and hit an iceberg? Oh yeah, but it won't. Like, they're right. not gonna. Are you kidding me? Uh, you know. Yeah. Even if the even if the guy was drunk, the DPS wouldn't allow it. Like, someone's <laughs> gonna stop it. Like, it's not gonna happen. But yeah, that but that was the same when SpaceX launched the Dragon capsule, that sent uh, the two astronauts to the International Space Station on the very first time in, that the United States sent a private, you know, astronauts out into space without having to ferry through Russia, you know, mm-hmm. because we were using all their rockets, you yeah. know, pretty yeah, much buying yeah, we rides. Mm-hmm. Fucking st- the most expensive Uber on the, on the planet. It was it was really, planet. really stupid. Yeah. Well, I mean, but ah, that was it. So now they're like, well, instead of taking $10 million and giving it to the Russian space, you know, uh, program, we'll just give it to private funders in America, even if they're commercial, you know, and they, they follow all their rigorous testing. But watching Bo- Bob and Doug go up and, and like, you see them in the ship. It looks like a Cadillac, like the Dragon capsule. It's mm-hmm. like slick and sl- actually it kind of looks like the inside of a Tesla if it were a spaceship. Like kind of white, stark, slick. You know, it's just, it's not like wires sticking out and like, again, no more toggle switches and flashing lights. It's All like right. just, it's practical, efficient, and futuristic. And it damn well should be. Like, I don't even know how the hell they got up there in 1969. Like, I can't even imagine. You imagine that there a was a monkey. A lot of people monkey. say they didn't. I know you you and your moon theory. No, no. I, I really don't have a moon theory, but a lot of people do. A yeah, lot of people it's just, will, it's yeah. asinine because I feel like it's a, it's an insult to, like, where we're at now because, like, there's no way that they could have done that without it because the math is, the math was always plausible. Right. It was always the technology. You know, and I'm going to tell you, though, you put enough money into it. That's like saying, you know, like, I can't believe. No, there's no way we built the pyramids. Like, yeah, people do great things. We can, you know, it takes a lot of money and effort and knowledge. But if you got enough backing behind it, it will get done. They still don't know how they built the the pyramids. They have no idea. I mean, there's speculations and enough. They did find a lot of the uh, the, um, the architects left. uh, I think that was found recently in the last few years. They found the architects, like instructions like because you know they had architects for the pyramids and they left and there was many of them and like it took 20 30 years to build the pyramids it wasn't like it happened overnight no but they had they had found architects 
plans and and notes and stuff explaining how certain things were done. Wow, but I don't have to look that up. Even then, yeah, it still it still leads way to you know speculation. How did they actually move the rocks? Did they did they channel in through the Nile and make a levee system and float them down river? Because how did they get them to that part of the? Yeah, because they had to move them pretty far. You know, but does it at this point? That's the, this is what I think about. Yes, we could speculate on this for another hundred years without actual definitive proof. But all I know is that in another hundred years from now, we will have irrefutable data, video, pictures, and proof that we did this now. From like, there is no more of that tablets in the in the sand. Like we have data, we mm-hmm. have irrefutable evidence that these things happen, you know, data that holds on for years. Um, at well, least, you know what I'm saying? It's not like a tablet. It's not going to get lost in time. I mean, unless there's some kind of... This technology could get lost in time. I mean, what happens eh. if, if there's a mass human extinction well, and all the people smart enough to build the sure. machines that can read this stuff are gone? Fair enough. but And that's the most extreme of all extremes. Yeah. So at that point, you'd have to lose every smart person in the world where even most non-incredibly smart people could figure it out. But you'd need the technology to read it. And that's why they also hard copy most things somewhere anyway. Yeah. But yeah, I just think that there's still... like I don't think they're going to... It's the year 2150. They're not going to be going, I wonder how they did this. They're just going to, or, you know, whatever, pull it up. And they're going to be like, well, here's the historical data of how they did it. Here's yeah. the here's the formulas. Here's the here's everything. Here's the math. Here's the science. Here's the engineering. Here's the blueprint. And yeah. they're going to go, oh, hmm, okay. Oh, yeah. We, yeah, it's just, primitive. They're going to they're gonna Google it. <laughs> yeah, whatever their version of Google is. Psych it, because I'm pretty sure we'll be connected up to computers yeah. by then. You know, some kind of symbiotic relationship. Oh boy! But man, that's where we're going. Yeah, that, that, and that's the great thing about science is that all these people across the globe, they don't care that you're an American and that they're a Russian. No, and they shouldn't. And that, right. I, I wish, but I wish the, but countries the that, could think like that. Yeah, like, but I the think people that have better. the power to yeah. blow up and destroy the world, yeah. they'll kill each other. While the scientists are like, hey, let's try to figure out. This let's work thing. together. Yeah. Let's work Isn't together. that weird? Isn't that like a, it, it's like a complete opposite. It, it, it's redundant in a lot of ways. Like you guys are fighting while they're trying to work. To, and they're trying to keep the politics out of it. Because both, I mean, Russia and the United States would be a good example. Because they both love their countries. Mm-hmm. And they're proud of their countries. And they're proud of what they, they can do. Yeah. <laughs> and then they have to work together. But they don't really fight about it because they don't care. They leave the politics aside and they get done what needs to get done. You know? At the end of the day, they want to make sure that they get off of this thing alive. Yeah. Yeah. Once. <laughs> yeah. Artemis is going to be fun. Artemis, I will definitely have a thing done for that because that's going to be exciting. Couldn't think of anything else because everything else is good. They, they launch stuff all the time. Yeah, they do. I think it's really cool that we get to see it, you know. Like I would right love to take a trip yeah. down there. My biggest fear is that you get two days off and you're like, I'm going to go see a rocket launcher. And, and they drive canceled. Yeah, you drive all the way down to Cape Canaveral and they scrub yeah. it. And they're like, well, it's going to happen next Thursday. And you're like, fuck, yeah. I can't come back here next Thursday. I can't get a hotel for a week and wait for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Even though it's a four-hour drive, that's still, I need like a two days off, you know, just to, just to get it. And they, what time are they launching? Is it an early launch, a late launch, a yeah. mid-launch? Where do you park? You know, <laughs> yeah, do you tailgate? You gotta be, yeah, I mean, pretty long tailgate. You got to be at least a mile and a half, two or three miles away Something just like to that. watch it. And then the sonic booms. Oh, it's crazy when uh, when the SpaceX heavies come down, mm-hmm. you hear the sonic booms. And it was crazy because they, they, they come down. There was two of them coming down at the same time. And one boom came through and you hear the cutout on the mic. And then the... <laughs> And then they were like, whoa, did you hear that sonic boom? And boom! And then another one comes through. And like, oh, the other one. Did you feel that? I certainly felt that, Bob. You know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the replay. Yeah. There's no time for replays. Like, we'll watch that later. Uh, oh, that's got to be something. See, what happened when, back in like the late 1990s. I was okay. in bed. And all of a sudden, I hear this expl- It sounded like a car crashed into the side of the house. Okay. Concord? I, I don't know what it no, was. No, they wouldn't but, fly it. They wouldn't fly it over the United States. But uh, not over land. It, it blew me out of my bed. I was outside running around. It's like two, three o'clock in the morning. I'm looking around to see where this car is that crashed into right. the house. So I go to work the next day, and someone's like, "Oh yeah, that was a sonic boom." I'm like, "In West Palm Beach?" Yeah, I mean, I guess it could have been from a military plane. You know, B fifty, uh, one of those military jets. Yeah. Could be from a rock. No, but it wouldn't be here. The rock no. too close. 
Meteorite coming in would do it. But then again, you'd know a meteorite hit if it made a sonic boom loud enough to hear it. Yeah, it was loud. Holy yeah. crap. That's why I figured it might have, like at that time, I know the Concorde was still flying. Mm-hmm. They canceled that too, another thing. Like, you sure, we have, we can have a jet that flies supersonic. That's no problem. But can you have a jet that flies supersonic over land? Not really, because it blows out windows and the sound is absolutely incredible. They only allowed it to fly over the ocean because right. it's stupid loud. They're actually working. I didn't. I, I just looked at this the other day. They're working on a new one, like that has like something like forty or fifty percent less sound, uh, just through aerodynamics of the plane itself. Not really the change. I think so much in the engine. Still yeah, I, I heard about that a while ago. Actually. Yeah. yeah, which again, it, 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 that's like they're like it's a good idea, but if you don't have the technology to make it work right, we, we have to put this on hold. You know, and you can't spend millions of dollars. Who has like that kind of money? Like, who really needs to get to China, like? Really, 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 really fast. <laughs> like, not many people, right? So, I mean, like, sheiks and billionaires, right, and stuff like that. But they got their own private jets, and they just take, like, take an extra day. They don't care. Yeah. The idea, like, that you really, do we really need that? I, I guess. Yeah. I mean, how how long did it take for the Concorde to go from uh, New York to London? We'd have to look it up, but it was, it, was, it normally takes, it's not actually that long on a normal plane, because it's only, like, 4,000 miles away across the ocean. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, if you matter, instead of four hours, maybe it took an hour, yeah, not a half. Yeah, it was something like that. It cut the time in half or something. But again, you tripled, quadrupled the price just to get there a little bit faster. Yeah. Like, that's what I was saying. It's that's not all like, the swimsuit models and all of that kind of stuff. But those are just super high-end, like... And, again, if you think about it, too, back then, maybe there wasn't as much communication. The internet was still in its infancy. You couldn't just video conference with someone like instead of flying all the way to fucking london i can just zoom call them right or or do the stuff you can remote contact you know yeah. even a phone call doesn't do justice they had video conferencing back then but it wasn't what we had no. now it was much more rudimentary and, and anybody can do it anywhere at any time right like and we get it free on messenger right. so it's not even like we, you have to pay for some special thing yeah but the idea is like that's why i said do we really need it like i don't know i don't know and they're going to make it anyway. They're going to do it just right. to make it, even if it doesn't work. They may not make it commercially, but the military would certainly use it for something. Hell yeah. Like a quieter subsonic. And you know, they're like, yeah, we'll take two. Yeah, right. <laughs> and can you slap some missiles on there for whatever reason? <laughs> Gatling gun. We're going to go kill some people. <laughs> Shh. Be dead but only if quiet. they shoot at us first. Yeah. Hey, they shot or at us. Or if they send a weather balloon <laughs> into oh, our my space. God. A balloon. <laughs> Yeah, that was embarrassing. Yeah. I mean, I know I, t- I, I get excited about space and I talk about it, but it's like funny. It's like when you're not like really, really into it, you could talk all day, but it's mostly, it is kind of dull. Like you have to pick and choose because, and you have to kind of get excited and see the understandings of it because it really isn't that that exciting. Right. Well, one day it will be. I can't wait to watch people on the moon. Like, what are the moon people doing? And you just pull it up on your phone and, like, you know, moon people live. This guy's, like, sleeping in his little moon cot. And we're like, look at him. <laughs> It'll be, they'll have a, their own webcam. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, how many people would pay for that? Like, and it, well, most likely, most of it will be free. Yeah. Just through NASA. But if, if you charge, people, oh, my God, people would pay. Of course. You know? I just want to look up at the moon because it's one of the few things we can actually clearly see. Mm-hmm. And be like, there are people there right now. Yeah. There's a guy... Eating a moon sandwich, a moon pie on the moon. <laughs> <A> moon <right>? pie. <laughs> <laughs> Sleeping in his moon cot. <laughs> That's going to be fun. So hopefully we'll live long enough to see that. Yeah. That, what they that. say? 2030 by the end of Artemis because that'll, that'll be Artemis 4. Because mm-hmm. after two, you know, the astronauts fly around. They mm-hmm. don't actually land and they fly around and they come back. Artemis 3 would be where they launch... <laughs> The all of the uh, it should be again allegedly air quotes where they launch all of the materials to start the bases. They they always send that shit first, right. and they get the land the lunar lander, and then they send the people and they start working on it. Get a a, a rudimentary moon base set up. They'll probably end up staying f- uh, for a while on the ships themselves on the actual lunar lander right. themselves. Blue Origin has a contract for one. SpaceX has a contract, and actually by the end of this month. Be excited, people! SpaceX will hopefully launch the uh, super uh, the uh, the Starship again. Third third attempt. Hopefully, this one doesn't blow up. Yeah, like the last two, which is okay because no one's on them. Yeah, and 
he expects it. It's like, you know, it's how they learn. Yeah. But, you know, at this point, we're like, okay, we want to see this thing fly because it's the biggest spaceship ever created in all of mankind. Like, that's crazy. Well, at least the biggest reusable. Yeah. Uh, you know, Atlas was pretty big too. But then again, most of Atlas got dumped in the ocean. I, I really don't count that stuff anymore. I think it's a feat beyond feats. Pyramid level achievements that we can even get into space. But the fact that we can reuse is like all efforts should be towards that. You yeah. know, at least getting towards that. Like, oh, save you know. so much money. I just, yeah. I mean, right? Yeah. But and that, who, who wants to build all that stuff just to have it get dumped in the ocean? Yeah. I mean, and it's got to be rough for even like like companies like SpaceX or Blue Origin or or Virgin Galactic. Like they're putting their own money. It's not even like government money. Yeah. You know, it's one thing when you have nobody to blame but yourself. You know, and then you just I just dumped you know I don't know two billion dollars into the ocean. It's like what? Oof. Yeah, but we we you know we did this, and it's like yeah, but you can land them. <laughs> uh, oh, we'll get there. So hopefully, actually, yeah, we'll definitely talk about Starship. It's going to happen. I believe they have one more launch. No, actually, it's the end of December. They lost it, so they might have to launch next year, which will be you know January or something. Mm-hmm. But they were given three or four launches. They did a static fire just the other day, and they're okay. Static fires are boring. They just they lock it on the pad and, and fire up the rockets just to make sure that all of the boosters work. Mm-hmm. It doesn't actually go anywhere. So, I mean, they're fun. There's a lot of smoke and fire, but it doesn't do anything. You know, right. they test a deluge system and to make sure that all of the, the launch pad and everything sticks. But static fire tests are nothing compared to the thing taking off. No. Especially when it destroys the launch pad. Yeah. They, it destroyed much less of it this time. <laughs> <laughs> he fixed it. <laughs> like he, But that's a learning lesson, too. And he said it. He's like, well, we didn't know any better. We don't know. We, no one's ever made a rocket this big and put this many engines on it and taken off from this type of launch pad. So, like, you can't. And no matter how they fail, no matter how people look at it, a failure is a great success, when, especially when no one dies. Yeah. You know? And when you see these things explode, I'm like, he's got the oxygen tanks, like, right there. And, like, all of the other stuff is, like, one, all it takes is a piece of that to just fall into it. Not only did the rocket explode, but you destroyed half of your whole entire launch area. You know? It's crazy. But, yeah. So, there you go. There's my excitement for space this month. (laughs) That's all I got. I'm kind of tapped out. We'll come back when when Starship launches and, and, and Artemis actually gets closer. I don't even know what month. They just say 2024. Well, today's episode has been brought to you by Moon Pies. (laughs) Moon Pies and Moon Cots. (laughs) And and little Moon (laughs) Men. I was trying. You know, because the first Artemis, what did they send up? Moonikins. Yeah, that's you know the, the Moonikins. Moonikins. I love that. That was probably one of the best. And like NASA sometimes really sucks at like key, like you know, like they have bad acronyms like they want it to work so they just come up with a name and it's sometimes it's not the moonikin thing i don't know who came up with it it's it's great yeah it's great it's fantastic it is yeah no we're not sending people we're sending moonikin (laughs) what the fuck is a moonikin it's a mannequin that goes to the moon yeah hence moonikin moonikin. and if and if they go crazy in space they become uh, mooniacs (laughs) (laughs) that's pretty good (laughs) Actually, one of them had boobs. It had she had actually almost fully functioning boobs. Really? Well, they they mimicked the 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 breasts of women because th- that's again they're going to send women this time, uh-huh. which again is a first. I, I you know I hate when they say like a woman and a man of color is going to the moon. It's like you mean people? Yeah. Right. Yeah. They're sending people. They're Great. sending people. Okay, it's not like a chimp or a hamster or some ants. They're sending right. people. I, I I don't care. I want them all to be astronauts, right? And they should be women of all genders and colors and whatever like whatever yeah. but uh whoever's best to do the job right but the idea that like that's how far we've come from what they wouldn't have sent back then to now right. and actually women in a lot of ways are far better in space just for their slimmer build and you know easier but their anatomy has to be now studied because they've never done this mm-hmm. even though we've had astronauts in the in the ISS we've never gone that far from the you know the earth's protective uh, you know, the sun rays are going to be, radiation is going to be higher. So they actually made the Moonikins really, they were really sophisticated. <laughs> they were like, if you went to Sears and you saw like one of those mannequins wearing an outfit and that outfit costs like $3 million. Like, no, not the outfit. The mannequin costs $3 million because mm-hmm. like, it had sensors and all kinds of shit in there. Wow. That is cool. Yeah. yeah. Science. Science. Yeah. It's a verb. So, <laughs> 
It's it's a verb. Is it a verb? Oh, well, yeah. it's a verb and a yeah and a noun. Mm-hmm. Sure, we'll make it whatever we want. It's great. Yeah. All right, everybody. That's it. I got nothing else. We'll just ramble on about science, and <laughs> I think you've had enough. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll be back when uh, this thing is flying through the uh, flying through the cosmos. Yeah, and if you guys don't hear from us, we'll be back next year with another uh, episode of Lifetime of Conversations. Next year, meaning you know, a couple of weeks, twenty twenty four. Yeah. It is 2024, right? Yes. Oh, it's going to be. Oh, it will be. Yes, wow. indeed. Okay. All right. Well, you guys have a happy holiday and, uh, you know, fly safe out there. Peace. <laughs>